So yeah, I, I just wanted to talk through the next steps here. Now that we've got this keyless signing released, um, I want to make sure we're aligned on the direction that we're headed. It sounds like maybe there's either some misunderstanding or misalignment. I'm actually not 100% sure which, but I want to make sure that we're on the same page between our two teams and um, also you know, work together to figure out how we can get the support we need to get the new features across the finish line. Um, I wonder if it might help just to show real briefly what we have today in a quick demo. Would that be useful to everyone? I well, personally me. went I went through a doc, so I'm fine either ways. Okay. Okay. Um, sounds good. I'll I'll skip the demo then, but essentially right now you can sign build artifacts container images and packages just by modifying a few lines in your CI CD file. Um, I know, Darren, when you and I were talking before, I think the vision was to always have that eventually be something that just happened uh, without even requiring developers to go change their CI CD YAML file. And so I still am really hoping that we can find a path towards that to having it be an on by default experience. Um, I know that there is some concern because it does generate another artifact file, which has the signature in it. And so at least when we first re released the attestation feature, we had that behind a variable so that it was default off. And then users would have to switch that variable to true if they wanted to opt in. So our current proposal is to do something very similar here, where there would be a variable that you would have to toggle to true, and then that would enable the signing. It essentially would be, you know, you still would have to change your CI CD file, but it would be fewer things that you would have to insert into the CI CD file compared to now you would just set one variable to true, and then it would sign all of your build artifacts is what we would propose for the first step. Um, but I, I don't know, it sounds like maybe there are some concerns about generating this additional artifact file that oh. I'm not fully understanding. Well, yeah, well, let me ask, let me ask the question in a very simplistic way. Suppose we had this feature enabled in a runner today, right? As a user, what do I have to do? Or if anything, to make sure that to to make sure that my workflows work with this thing turned on. Is there anything I have to do? So the only state where I could see this breaking workflows is if for some reason users have a verification job at the end of their pipeline that counts to see how many build artifacts were generated because we would be generating one additional build artifact. So I think, um, so I think what, uh, I think, what Darren is more interested in is, you know, how would how would users how would we expect users to be using, you know, these signed artifact files? And I think what our plan is is that we're, we're going to start showing in the GitLab UI, um, like what artifacts have been signed and like if they have valid signatures. So if you you can either verify those signatures manually by like downloading the files and checking them using command line tools. But we're going to also show that same status in GitLab so that you don't have to do anything. You can just look in GitLab and see like these artifacts are signed and their integrity is good. Okay, let, let me ask it a different way. Um, I, I don't know anything about GitLab's artifact signing capabilities. I'm a developer. I create a pipeline that's going to create an, that's going to generate an artifact. Right, very simple pipeline. It's going to generate some artifacts, right? And I expect to be able to use the artifacts somehow. Um, in addition to simply creating my GitLab YAML file, which might be a very simple YAML file, like, hey, build something, generate artifact. Do I have to do anything else? So the vision is no, uh, it just happens. That, that's where we really want to get to. Um, for the first step where we're at right now, you have to add, I, I don't know, maybe four or five lines to your CI YAML. What we're proposing is taking that and moving the workflow into the runner so it, it just queues off one variable. So 
um, I forget what variable name I proposed. It was like sign, enable signing or something like that. And if you set that to true, it would just sign your artifacts. So as a developer, all you would need to do is set the variable sign artifacts to true. And then it would do all of that signing for you without any additional steps on your part as a developer. And, and so that would be phase two. And then phase three, I would, as a breaking change, I would like to just default that to on. So instead of being an opt-in experience, it becomes an opt-out experience. So you could have a very simple pipeline. It's producing a build artifact. And without making any other changes whatsoever, it just would sign it for you on your behalf um, without you needing to do anything else. Well, Mike, my, my concern about the artifacts being automatically signed is that I'm not sure if that will impact any any of the current customers' workflows. And I think we need to do a lot of investigation and research just to validate that piece of it. I'm uh, sorry it's clearly about that. I'm pretty sure it will. Like if I have three files uh, as a total of my artifacts job, and I always verify against these three files particularly. Now, if I have another one, that's certainly going to be a problem in some cases. And I think we even hit something similar when we started generating uh, the provenance file. OK, let me um, let me write this stuff in the agenda real quick. I do have something I want to say, but I want to make sure that it gets written down. So the thing about this being on by default and uh, having it magical and all that, it needs to be truly magical. So if it's just a file that's added to a zip file that's my own, like I have a zip file and you want to add a file to it, that's, that's uh, going to be problematic in some cases. So if you want to have that your provenance file that's going to sign stuff and that's going to show up in the UI, it needs to be separate from my own artifacts. So it needs to be uploaded to a separate endpoint. It needs to be completely separate from my own files. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. I was thinking, what if you can make this a special artifact type and it doesn't get grouped with the regular job artifacts? But you could go to like a separate endpoint and download the signature that way. Yeah, that that's way. that certainly has to be this way. If uh, I, right. I mean, if yeah. we decide to go with the overall design. I think that could be a really good solution. Because doing um, the signing itself doesn't hurt anything. I think what I'm hearing everyone say is the problem is that publishing the signature as a build artifact could potentially cause problems um, or confusion or get in the way of other things. I'm not exactly certain that signing the artifacts itself isn't going to cause problems. If I want to sign a 40 gigabytes artifact, that's going to use my processing power. And if I'm paying for we'll that, have to have some reasonable limitations on that. I think that's um, in any case, even if even if you want to sign uh, 200 megabytes files, but you want to do it a uh, thousand times a day, even if that takes uh, one second, uh, when you add that up in big scale, that that's gonna be a, a bunch of money. Yeah, that's true. I think we'll yeah. definitely want to still give users a way to opt out of it. So I, I think the end goal would be an on by default, but opt out experience. 
I, I mean, that's, that's not my decision to make, but as a user of that and what I've seen from our huge users who I mean have uh, huge CI farms where every single cent is accounted for and they won't optimize as much as they want to, this is going to be very, very bad for them. And they need to be 100% aware of whether, uh, you know, uh, this is going to happen for them. So everybody needs to know that they need to opt out of that before we make it automatically on. Yep. And, and that's kind of what I was going back to my point above about the research. I think we need to survey a lot of these large enterprise customers that have all these very complex workflows because to Georgie's point, the conversations we get pulled into about making pipelines more efficient, reducing costs, Developers don't want to wait, not breaking workflows. You introduce something that's on by default in someone's regular, I don't know, test pipeline, and you're signing a bunch of artifacts every hour of the day. It, it could become very problematic. So that's why I I, I, am, I know I sound like um, a little bit of a downer, but I think the on by default timeline should be, should be one that we think about really conservatively. Okay. So. I'm hearing all the concerns here as well around on by default. Are there any concerns with developing this in an off by default opt-in experience for now? And you know, we can always figure out when or if we deprecate it or change it to an on by default later, but are you okay with us proceeding with making this off by default and opt-in essentially that phase two where if you set a variable to true, then all of this happens. And if you don't, then you know nothing changes from what happens today. Um, to answer that question, what are we, besides the attestation feature that we added some months back, to wrap up this next piece of the feature, what's actually required? What are we thinking is actually required to be added to the runner, if anything? Brian, do you know? Sorry, I was writing the agenda. Uh, what was the question? Um, in order to finish this next piece of the feature, sort of the, the native signing, is there any additional features or capabilities required in the runner code base to, to finalize this feature? Yes, so the main thing that I'm not sure about is we would have to actually run cosign uh, to you know, sign these artifacts. And I'm not sure if there's a good way uh, for the runner to like invoke an external program like that. So in order to sign the artifact at some point in the artifact generation process, you're going to be looking to instruct the runner to reach out to this cosign process in order to do sign. So where would cosign be? Well, is cosign going to be bundled somehow? Is the customer expecting to have cosign already pre-installed? Yeah, that's um, that's something that I haven't figured out yet. And it's you know it is cosign is written in Go, so we could possibly see about you know like pulling it in as a library and using it that way. But the problem is that that might not be a supported, that might not be a kind of usage that the cosign team expects us to be doing. Um, so they may not be able to support that and they might ship breaking changes to it all the time. We're not sure. So I think <clears throat> I think we should probably reach out to Six Store and see what they think of that. But depending on the answer, you know, if if they don't want to allow us to use cosine as a library, then we would have to see about using an actual binary and reaching out to it as a process. And I think that could be that's going to be really difficult in terms of like distribution. Um, okay. So, George, I'm not sure if you heard the last conversation. We were talking about what's required to get us over the finish line, and there is the need for the runner to somehow connect to the cosine process. 
whether it's cosine bundle as a, as a library within the rudder somehow, or the application and the process is you know, somewhere in the environment. Yeah. Um, you, any concerns from your end about this last piece? I actually have a bunch of concerns uh, related to the proposal. Uh, so um, the distribution itself, I'm going to leave that for a while because I want to talk about a couple other things. Um, so there's this sentence in the proposal. Uh, all signing must be done in code outside the reach of the job. So I saw something proposed uh, with the words an internal GitHub runner job, which is not a concept that exists currently. Uh, so any signing that happens in the job happens in the job. There's no outside the job. Runner runs jobs. So um, if I have access to the infrastructure, I have access to the jobs that generate uh, these artifacts. Uh, so it, it seems to me that once again, we want something that magical, but we can't insert magic in there. Uh, mm, So if I'm uh, like a regular uh, developer of this company and I just run CI uh, workloads and I somehow artifacts are generated and somehow they're signed, uh, there's a very, very high chance that I can insert myself in that process. And we as GitHub, and GitHub runner more specifically, there's nothing we can do if we want to have uh, the generation to happen by GitHub runner. Uh, it can happen somehow, maybe let's say, uh, let's say you need to have a separate infrastructure that runs separate kind of workloads where only uh, you know signing happens and we transfer artifacts to there and then transfer the you know, the signature back, and then we transfer that to GitHub. Uh, I mean, it could happen, but um, I don't think that's what anybody wants. Uh, and the next one is very much similar. Uh, it is the token used to generate the signing key must only be possible to generate with the correct claims when generated by GitHub runner. So once again, we talked about this uh, last time, and if GitHub runner can generate something, chances are I can do it manually as well. Uh, if GitHub runner um, takes on the identity of, uh, you know, for example, takes on the AWS identity of the CI machine, it's using. Uh, I can do that manually as well. It's not doing it in any sort of way I can't replicate. Uh, so I don't think that's possible. And here I I want to ask you, why do we want GitHub Runner to do this? Is it because it's the CI thing and we just default to GitHub Runner? Is it because there's nobody else to do it? Or do we have like a very good reason to have GitHub Runner to do all this in this sort of roundabout way where we kind of accomplish something, but I don't, I don't feel like it's the best way to do it personally. Well, yeah, it goes back to that debate I was having in a call I was with, with I forget it was the six store folks or whomever, and this whole idea that they have that uh, I can forget, get the term they're using, um, but being able to trace the entire build process. And I, I was disagreeing with them that they're put, putting all of this on the build agent. Um, Georgie, if you were to do this, where would, would you create a whole new service that, the, that yeah. is taking care of the signing? Yeah, it, uh, I think it 100% needs to be a separate, is it gonna be a microservice? Is it gonna be inside the backend? I don't know. Mm. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is not something that you do uh, 
on the user's machine, which we are doing. So if I want to generate uh, another example, if I want to take this token from the backend and we really want this token to be unique and not be used by anybody. But if I just run this, uh, if I run this web request to get this token for GitHub runner from the backend in a network where I can sniff the network in some way or another, I can get this token again. Uh, there, there are a bunch of ways that this can be compromised. And again, uh, even uploading the artifact to the backend, we need to make sure that the correct artifacts are uploaded. Again, I can compromise that as well, but that leaves many, many less vectors where I can approach this and compromise the whole process. I don't need to think about uh, is the cosine uh, binary correct? Because me, again, as a CI user, I can replace the binary. Uh, I don't need to think about whether the network is particularly secure. I don't need to think about the token. I don't need to think about the identity of the runner. When all that is encapsulated in the backend, almost none of it matters. Yeah. So I think. I, it sounds like we need to do some threat modeling. You know, I think these concerns are valid, but I do think that there's also ways to mitigate them. And, you know, it, that's, that's a discussion that is, it requires a lot of thought and it's not really something that we can address on this call, but I think it would be great if you could write your concerns down, like in an issue, and then uh, we can see think about some ways that we can address them and do some threat modeling, maybe pull in the AppSec team if they can help. And I think, I think we can think through that and figure out a way to address those problems. Yeah, uh, this definitely needs to be a bigger discussion. I just, I went through a proposal before the meeting and I, I, I had the same concern before we started doing any of this. Uh, and I don't think that making the automatic cosine uh, exposure of the, you know, the environment variables and making that so automatic, I don't think that helped with any of these concerns. Uh, it's just easier, you know, before, before we couldn't really do it. Now, now we can, but that doesn't make it any more secure or anything like that. Yeah, but I, one, one thing that comes to mind is, you know, we're probably going to have the runner identity like embedded in the signature. And it's like you, each user is going to like determine the amount of trust that they designate to a specific runner. So like get their posted runners are probably are something you could probably consider trusted. You know, you you can um, most people are going to consider our network secure and like we have controls to keep people from accessing those production runners, right? So generally, if a runner is hosted by GitLab, you know we have this responsibility to, to ensure that you know there's nobody in our network intercepting these tokens or anything like that. Um, yeah, you can reasonably trust our own infrastructure, but, uh, still, um, we, we don't really have the concept of GitHub runner identity right now. Uh, what's that going to be, where that's going to come from? Uh, but presumably, uh, that's also not something set in stone. Um, if if we figure out uh, that concept, we we talked about uh, a user identity being injected into the runner. We talked about a machine identity injected into the runner. Um, in, in the end of the day, I don't particularly believe that uh 
the runner is always going to be a hundred percent source of truth. So, so if you sign uh, an arch pack, I'm not really sure. Again, I'm not really into this space so much. Oh, I've read uh, some readmes and some blog posts, so I'm I'm not uh, particularly sure. But uh, I I wouldn't put my trust in uh, in the runner always being a hundred percent safe as, as being reported in the generated at the station. Uh, regardless of how we choose to, you know, generate uh, uh, these substations in the end. Now, I do want to say uh, thank you for asking the tough question and setting a high bar because I do want to make sure that whatever we build is able to stand up to scrutiny. So thanks for keeping us accountable for that. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. I know we're... We're pretty well past time here. I just want to make sure I got all the summary takeaways and action items and that we're in agreement on them. So I've got three down here. So Darren, it sounds like you and I are aligned on a product perspective that we need more research before we talk about moving to phase three of an on by default experience. But it sounds like you're okay with moving forward with phase two, which is off by default and opt in. Yes? Um, no, because I think the architecture needs to be hammered out. I think we are not on the same page in terms of how it's actually going to be implemented. Okay, so I, we're, we're not aligned on, we don't have an architecture solution, but I think, are we aligned on the product uh, problems to be solved of like, are we okay with moving forward with that from, um, like a problem solution perspective. We just need to figure out the solution. Uh, I'm, I'm probably wording this really poorly, but. Uh, right, so, are, are... <laughs> so the missing piece is right now we don't have the signing, right? We have signing today. Someone could sign using cosign in the, in the pipeline, but we want to do better signing, correct? Correct. And I think how we, how we do that needs to be defined. Yes. That's the, the area that's right now there is a, I can, and we have even had, have, we have even brought in the runner staff engineers and some of the other engineers into the conversation. And I can, I, and I can imagine they will also have similar concerns to Georgie and they'll also raise other objections as we start looking at the other executive types. So I think that how are we going to do this signing thing piece needs to be really hammered out. Yes. Okay. I, I agree. So I think we've got the problem to be solved is agreed upon. The solution to the problem is still to be determined that's what i was trying to say okay so we need to work out what the solution is and then we also need to work with cosine to figure out again what that architecture is and then we need to uh review the security concerns and do some exploration there um does that summarize everything is there anything big that i missed Um, my last question is, there was that, we were kind of working on and off on the architecture blueprint for this. Is that still a thing or did we kind of let that down the line? It, um, we haven't really been working on it. Uh, I thought it was gonna be kind of straightforward and we wouldn't need one, but after the discussion today, it sounds like we probably will. <laughs> so, uh, I'll start I'll start exploring, you know, how we can possibly solve the issue and I'll write something up. Um, depending on how complex it seems, you know, it, it, we might be able to summarize it in issue description and then maybe we don't need a whole blueprint, but I'll, I'll see and we can discuss it. Yeah, look, the blueprint doesn't need to be heavy, you know, it could be lightweight too. It was just kind of like, you know, it doesn't have to be this PhD dissertation. It could just be like, hey, we think the signing thing looks like this. <laughs> and does everybody agree?